Andy Harmer from Clear over in Dublin for a few days. And Andy, how, what's the current state of the market? There's always something happening in our industry, um, I think as everybody knows. So luxury cruising, for example, is doing very well and that trend towards uh, modern luxury and uh, bringing luxury onto some of the bigger ships is certainly continuing. So there's a lot of excitement around Celebrity Edge, for example, with Celebrity putting a ship into Dublin. Um, but also we're seeing a lot of those smaller luxury ships being launched, which is great for the sector, adds, adds to that choice and adds to the variety of products that's available. And on the back of that, Expedition Luxury is also growing. So the likes of Scenic, who are launching an ocean ship, they'll very much have helicopters and submarines on board. Um, as well as some of the recent Silver Sea launches, uh, so a lot of luxury expedition products as well. Um, and the continuing growth of river cruising, you know, river cruises, tiny, uh, five to ten years ago, and really is continuing to prove that double-digit growth uh, is possible every year. Lots of new ships in Europe, but also along the haul on the Mekong and in North America as well. So, lots happening. And does, still, the numbers actually cruising, say, between Britain and Ireland would be, you know, around two million a year. Yeah. Um, it's still way, way below, say, the all-inclusive sector. Do you think, it's, there, there, is that battle still going on? Or? Well, I think if you look at the battle over the product, I think there is no doubt that Cruise is winning on product. So we are incredibly innovative, very creative. Those ships and itineraries are amazing. And I think we've really proven that we can add something to the holiday product that hasn't been there before. So. And there's so many examples, Cirque du Soleil on MSC Cruises, for example, uh, the racetrack on the back of Norwegian Cruise Lines later ship, uh, the new ship coming from p &O that will be using uh, different, different fuel, for example, lots of new entertainment, lots of new dining options. I think by a mile we're winning that battle. I think we continue to need to win the battle to get people to try their first cruise. We all know that once people have tried a cruise, they will cruise every time after that. Um, so we still need to win that battle. Do you think it's a tough sell for travel agents who maybe want to go more into niche markets because it's better commission? Or is, is ocean cruising something that's quite difficult to sell? Uh, you're probably asking the wrong person for that. No, not at all. I think cruise uh, is an easy product to sell purely on the basis that we know that repeat business is so good and that once people have been on a cruise, they love it. I think the what makes it a sell that many may not try is actually that it takes a little bit longer to explain the cruise product to holiday makers who've never cruised before. I think that's the bit that's difficult. Uh, and then narrowing them down to a specific brand and a specific ship. Maybe that takes a little bit of time. But we know that once, you know, as I say, great repeat business. The, the products they can have absolute faith in. We know that the product is incredible. Um, and I think the travel agents who know their customers, know the holidays that they like, know the destinations they enjoy, I think if we get that uh, and they have that information, then actually it's a really easy thing. Are there any trends in terms of destinations where people want to go ocean cruising? Is there a push towards the Far East, Middle East, or are people still going for the tried and tested areas? Yeah, we love the tried and tested uh, destinations. So the Med continues to dominate for the UK and Irish market. Uh, you know, it's a destination most people know. It's easy to get to, lots of choice of ships there, and great weather uh, most of the year round. Um, so the Med continues to reign supreme. Northern Europe, that area continues to do very well. So the Baltic is great, Norwegian fjords, um, and those shorter cruises uh, uh, in Northern Europe do very well. But certainly we're seeing a number of new itineraries and a lot of new ships being placed in areas that maybe we hadn't thought of being big cruise destinations yeah. before. So the Caribbean is growing again as a cruise destination. It, it, it leveled off for a while, that's back in vogue. Uh, Alaska is a great winter, uh, sorry, great summer destination and that's doing well and we've had Oprah Winfrey there on a Honda America Line ship uh, this month, so that's great. Um, and yeah, people are trying, people want to try something new, so people who may have cruised, taken two or three different cruises or holidays in the Med, maybe now are looking for something different. And, you know, Asia, both an ocean and a river cruise destination, Australasia, great, you know, cruising out to Sydney Harbour, there's nothing quite like that. Uh, New England is a great cruise destination that's doing well. Again, cruising out of New York, what a great opportunity mm. that is. So, so you know, again, that, that choice that customers have now is phenomenal. And also, the direct Aer Lingus flight now to Miami, is, I presume it's going to open up quite, quite a lot of uh, 
yeah, it's and, a new one. And, you know, and the Caribbean has always been a popular place for, for cruising. If you take the world, it's where most it's the most popular worldwide cruise destination. So as a result of that, lots of new ships being based out of Miami and other ports serving the Caribbean. So it does mean that the Caribbean you know, really is one of those places that if you've never cruised before, it is a great opportunity to visit those islands and try one of the newer ships. And what's the industry view on celebrity moving into Ireland next year, home boarding? Do you think anybody else will follow, or um, what's, what's your read on the situation? Uh, that's a very difficult question. I think I think some will wait and see. I mm. think uh, I think we all recognise that Ireland has huge potential as a cruise market, and not just the fly cruise product. You know, if you look at the trends in the UK, uh, the trend has been very much that home porting has been the big growth area. Mm. People like to sail somewhere close at home. So if if there is going to be a trend in the Irish market, it would be great to see some more ships home porting, given that extra choice to customers here. Um, you know, Ireland is already very well served by airlift, so there's plenty of options mm. for the fly crew. So I think it would be it would be great for the local market to see some choice. And how about Brexit? In terms of passengers going from England home porting, going trying to go to Europe, can you see huge issues with customs with, with, um, with porting? I think we're still too early to tell in the Brexit process. Um, and then, you know, actually you can't even go off early indications of what those decisions are going to be. So we'll, we'll wait and see. But I think cruising, you know, if you look at the trend and the demand for cruising over the last five to ten years, I think it'll be very, it'll have to be a major change for it to have any effect really on the popularity of cruising. And has All Inclusive um, simplified the process, say for the consumer, in terms of ocean cruising and say with river cruising as well? Yeah, I think people understand uh, what an all-inclusive product looks like. I think they understand that once you buy that ticket then you have very little to pay for during your holiday. And we've seen all-inclusive do really well in the luxury sector of course. Some mainstream lines have been offering very competitive drinks packages or even complimentary ones and Norwegian now of course have taken the plunge uh, with, with all-inclusive on board uh, and as you say on rivers as well. So I think I think it's a great option for people who want to have all of that included, but I think we'll always get customers who want to make decisions on the day as to what they spend and what they what's included in their holiday. So I think uh, we'll still have that choice. And are you meaning to trade over here in Dublin? Yes, so tomorrow we're on Holiday America Line ship whilst she's in Dublin for the day, so meeting an overnighting, I believe she is. Uh, so a great opportunity to meet some of the trades, some of the, uh, some of the local uh, media, and, uh, and it's always nice to come to Dublin. Thank you.